Welcome to The Better Buy, where I give you the information you need on the stuff that you want so you can make the better buy. I'm gonna teach you how to make a 360 real estate video tour. And all the footage that I use for the tour is available in the description. So if you're the kind of person that likes to follow along on your own computer and put the stuff into the Insta360 software and manipulate it and maybe export it and then edit it in Final Cut like I'm gonna teach you how to do, if you want to follow along with all of that, it's all available for you in the description. Right now, it's just 10 bucks for anyone that jumps in with the coupon code, the coupon code is right here popping up at the bottom of the screen. There's a hundred of those. After those are gone, it's just 20 bucks. But either way, it's a great way to support my channel. And more importantly, it's lifetime access. I'm going to continue to add all of my X3 content into this course. So once you're in, you're in forever. Every time I put new video content in there with stuff to download for you to practice and work with, it'll be available for you for life. So it's a one-time support of my channel and a lifetime support of you. I hope it helps you out. And I'm really excited to offer this out to the community. Either way, let's dive into everything that I did to make this video tour. When it comes to camera settings, all I used was the 5K at 30 frames per second. That's it, all right? A couple of things really quickly is that you do not want to use HDR unless you have quality lighting, all right? I tried both. Um, the HDR is, is just a lot more noisy. So you wanna use a normal video mode. They even tell you that when you click HDR, like make sure there's a lot of lighting, but I just wanted to test it out. So I used 5.7K, 30 frames per second. And if you wanted to, you could control all of your settings. You know, you could go into manual. I just had it on auto white balance for on auto everything actually, and just let the camera do its thing. If you're someone that really wants to try and take it up a notch, obviously you can go manual and control all of your settings. I just didn't feel like it was necessary for me making this video. If I was doing it for a professional client, I would then probably go to the, the very nitpicky extreme of trying to get everything perfect. It also depends on the lighting that you're working with in the unit that you're filming, whether it's a house or a condo or something else. If the lighting is ever changing and you've got light from outside and you got the lights from inside and you didn't bring your own lighting setup, then that's gonna impact. So I just went with auto to simplify all of it. Okay, and overall, I think the results are more than good enough for what people would be looking for or experiencing at just an average level. If you're looking for that, you know, top line, perfect 360, you'd probably go for a, an even higher quality camera setup. So just something to consider. But that's all I did for the camera stuff. All right. And then this thing just sat around. Now, let's go ahead and dive into the footage. So this is the Insta360 app. And again, all of this footage is available to you in the link in the description. It's just 10 bucks right now. And obviously as the value increases, the price is gonna go up. So jump in now, gain access to everything that I do in the future. It's a great way to support the channel too. But as you can see in here, this is the HDR video and I filmed both. So I was very thorough in this process. I did a walkthrough with the HDR, I did a walkthrough with the 5.7K standard video. I did the standalone shots with the HDR, I did standalone with the five, like I did all of it, took like two and a half, three hours, but it's gonna let you see everything that I think you would want to know to make a buying decision on this camera for video tours. So as you can see right here, it's pretty grainy up in these sections. Obviously, if we tilt down, you can see me. And then if you wanted to zoom out, the way that it works with my mouse is I literally just drag up and down right here. So if I pull this way, it's gonna zoom out. And then obviously pushing in is gonna give you that angle. And you can control all of this before you export from the app. So I'm here right now, if I press play, it's gonna start the walkthrough and I'm just gonna to continue to tilt like this. Oh, I guess I went to this closet first, you can see right there. So there's that. And if I want to, I can add just a little keyframe right here and that's gonna let my camera know that I want it to be at that angle when I get to this spot. And now I'm gonna press play again, it's gonna close it. So you can kind of see the editing process is pretty straightforward if you were to edit this like just in this view. I like the view that I'm getting right now. Everything is fine. It's gonna turn and there I am right here. And then obviously I turn this way and that way. What I am doing intentionally is turning the main camera as if you only had that angle so that it naturally flows through the experience without much editing in post. So I can pause right here. I really like that angle. I just wanna make sure that that's the one that I'm keeping and we're gonna keep going, all right? So we'll let that go. And now you can see we're getting this whole experience and if you wanted to, you could obviously add a zoom in or a zoom out and you've got all the footage you need. So we've got the little closet here. I could pause right here and we could do a little pan down if I wanted to, not gonna do that for this moment. And then obviously the camera turns around and heads back out this way, okay? So that's essentially how the footage works. 
And if I wanted a wider angle here, I could be doing all of this at this angle. Like, let's just say I wanted it to go wider when I walked back out. Now we're back at this. And everybody's going to get that experience if I export it just like this. This is not the 360 viewing that you can do on YouTube. I'm going to show you that in a second. This is just if you wanted to control every angle that they are seeing. So you do get a little bit of warping when you're zoomed out this far. I might punch in just a little bit to change that warping. And that's going to be a personal call based on if you want to try and make the room look bigger than it actually is, or maybe try and make it as big as it is. So you can see right now we're going into the kitchen. You can see the height of the camera in relation to the kitchen. It's basically just at six and a half feet, I would say. And then we've got this little door here. And again, if you wanted to, as you're doing this walkthrough, you could have the camera end up in this angle by this point very briefly. So if I was to set it, you know, back up here and I come up and let's say I want it to walk into the kitchen at this moment. So we're going to add a keyframe to make sure that we keep that. And then I'm going to come over to maybe right here where it was looking into this little cabinet area. And I'm going to come down just so they can see that as it goes in. And now if I'm here and I press play, you're going to see up until this moment when I enter the kitchen, it's facing exactly what I want. But then as I turn and go towards the door, it's going to start to pan down and give them that viewing experience of like seeing the actual lower end of the video. OK, now I wouldn't want it to stay there. So what I would do in, at this point is obviously lift it back up, tilt it this way, maybe just a little bit and add another keyframe. And now I'm going back into the normal walkthrough experience. This is the, the HDR. You can see all the graininess here. I'm going to go ahead and jump over to the other one, which I have down here at the bottom. It's number 51. So if you're following along, you can see how much it's already cleaned up in this area, right? If you look at this top section here, if I go back so you can see the difference and click on this one, you're going to see how much grain is at the beginning of this video up in here, all along the sides. So if you're making a video tutorial or not a tutorial, a walkthrough, um, a tour, then I highly recommend use the normal video mode. It is much cleaner in all of the, the shadow areas. And obviously, if you're working in lower light, that matters. Now you can see with this video, it's about the same length. I'm doing the exact same process. I did skip the closet this time through, but it's basically the exact same viewer experience. If you want someone to have this experience in the 360, all you have to do is export the 360 video. So you go over here and you're going to hit export, this little yellow thing. And then personally, I would say make this as high quality as possible. We're going to click export 360. All right. And then I'm going to make this all the way to the max. All right. And if you want to increase, you can go ProRes, but you'll notice that it goes from 7.33 gigabytes right here. If I click ProRes, we're going to be hitting a 43 gigabyte file. I wouldn't bother with that right now. And the reason why is we're going to take this video and then we're going to drop it into Final Cut to do some final tweaking with maybe some of the lighting or maybe if you want to do any other editing with the footage, that's where I would do that editing in either Premiere, Final Cut or wherever you're doing it. So I don't need to export this because I've already exported it. Let's jump over to Final Cut where you can see what we have going on. So here is the actual footage in Final Cut, as you can see, and this is a 360 video, right? If I wasn't going to be doing the 360 video here, then I could just be editing the normal video tour. As I scroll through, you can see it's got this really kind of funny look here, but that's totally fine because when I export this as a as just a standard clip, it's going to be able to be put into YouTube and treated as a 360 video. And I'll show you that later. So the main thing here that I want you to get is that now if I want to do any sort of editing, like if I want to lower some shadows, raise some highlights or whatever, I can do all of that here. I wouldn't say that there's a ton of range for this footage, but you can modify a few things, make stuff a little bit brighter. I'm actually going to pull that. Yeah, we'll go a little bit brighter here. I like a little more contrast. Saturation wise, I'm probably going to pull for the color. I'd like to get rid of some of the yellowing because the fluorescent lights. So we're going to pull the highlights over here and just pull the yellows down just a little bit. So it's not because if we go, you can see all that yellow tinge. I'm just going to pull this down a little bit. So we end up with more of a cooler look here. And then for the midtones, I might press in a little bit of blue to try and offset. Let's see. 
That's going way too magenta. I just want to kind of offset a little bit of that yellowing again. And I think that's fine for what I have. Yeah, that's pretty good. So just a little bit of editing. I wouldn't do a ton here. Obviously, you could do some pixel peeping. You could zoom in, put this guy at, you know, 100% if I wanted to. We could go to 100 here and really look at what colors we've got and try and modify some of this for that. I could probably lift it up. There we go. That's giving us a little bit more of a blue, whitish look. And then obviously, if I turn this off, you can see the difference. Look at that yellow right here versus kind of these cooler colors. And then if we go right here, for instance, you can see this is without. You really get that yellowing experience. And this is with. It's much more of a, a wider temperature. So that's just some of the stuff you can do in post. After you export this, then you're going to upload it to YouTube. And it's going to be a 360 video. So that's that's pretty much that whole little process. Now what I want to do is just briefly show you what's going on because I basically stopped using the HDR once I saw how bad it was in here, but you I put all those photo, those videos in the download so you can see them. But if I click on like for instance this HDR, you can see this is the kitchen. It's pretty grainy up top there. And but I mean overall it's not terrible. It's just not as good as the 5.7K. So I would go over here and grab 5.7K. This should be somewhere near the kitchen section. Look at that. It's a much cleaner thing. And what I did here in the kitchen is several different shots, and you have all of them in the downloads, so that I can stitch them together. And what you're going to do is, after you've kind of figured out all the shots that you want to keep, you're just going to export each one of them in the 360 video. And when you export each of them in the 360 video, then we're going to take all of those exports, put them into Final Cut, trim them down, clip them together. So you get like a, a smooth 360 video where you're just in different sections of the house and you can look and see stuff. All right. So I've actually already done that. We're going to go ahead and hop back over to Final Cut and work on the next stage. So now all I've done is after exporting the 360 footage, I just dropped it into Final Cut. But before I did that, I had to create an event that was in the 360 setup or format. So here's all you do. You go up, you click File, you're going to click New. And after you've got that, you're going to click Event. All right. Once you've gone to the event, you have to change it to a 360 video. So we're going to scroll down here until we hit 360. And then that's going to do the rest of the stuff. I don't really change anything here because we are monoscopic. And what that simply means is we, we've just got one lens. All right. I know it's on both sides, but it's just one lens. Stereoscopic 360 is going to be if you've got both lenses here. And that's giving you that kind of like three dimensional look. This is a different kind of 360. So I go monoscopic. I keep my frame rate at 23.98. I filmed everything at 30 frames per second, so that just gives me a little bit, I guess, higher quality I get in between, you know, so less any sort of stuttering going on. And then obviously I've got Apple ProRes 422 here. You could change these qualities, but that's been fine for me. Just depends on the project you're doing and who you're sending it off to. And then color is standard Rec 709, and I use stereo 4K that. But I'm not using any audio from this, so that doesn't really matter. All right. Once you've done that, you would just hit OK and that would start your project. I don't need to do that because I already did that. And that is this project here. And what you're going to end up with is footage that looks like this. So you can see if I scroll through it. Well, this is just standard shots because it's the full 360 view. And all I'm going to do here is create a, a essentially a video that's in 360 that I can then upload to YouTube from these static shots. So all I'm looking for is you can see me on this left side right here. I just and also I'll, I'll show up on the frame on the right over here. I just want to get me out of frame. So I'm going to scroll until I'm gone and then I'll hit that. And then I'm going to scroll to the end where I come back and I just need to make sure that I'm out of frame. So I'm going to do this really quickly and then we'll move on to the next step. So now you can see we've got all the footage clipped down. I am out of all of it. The next step is going to simply be to obviously modify the footage in length to, to have enough for somebody to be walking through and kind of seeing. And then obviously not so long that you're just kind of like waiting for that section to end. And this is going to be different for each section. I'm not going to walk you through all of my thinking on this because you have access to all the footage. Again, if you click the link in the description, as long as you use that coupon code and you're one of the first hundred, you're going to get it for 10 bucks. Obviously, everybody after that, you know, price is going up. But in this little section here, you're going to get to play with your own footage, your own style and kind of see how long would you want everything to be. And this is a great way to practice if you're trying to get into 360 real estate tutorials, uh, not tutorials, tours. I keep saying that. Um, 
And so I just think it's a great way to, to get an idea and practice for what you're trying to do. Once you've done this, you will just export this footage exactly as it is, 360, and then we're gonna upload that to YouTube. And in the link in the description, you can see the final result. So I'll, I'll have that in the, in the description below. You can go watch the actual 360 video that I finished, and you'll get an idea of like the experience that you have with this footage. But one thing that I will say you're gonna want to do is if you have any experience with color grading stuff, we're gonna see how a lot of these rooms are changing colors throughout, especially when we get into like the outside goes a different color, when we get into the living room space because there's so much sun. You can see it more, more easily on the timeline, how we go from like these kind of cool colors down here and then it switches over to really yellow once we're in the bathroom. And that's just kind of like a greenish yellow actually. So we're gonna do a little bit of color correction there. This video isn't meant to be a tutorial on that, but I guess I'll show you really quickly what I would do. Um, if I grab this, I'm just gonna see, let's pull the green down a little bit just overall. That gets way too magenta. So let's actually reset that. And I'm gonna grab, I really just need the highlights to pull this yellow out. That already looks a ton better than it did you can see, and then I might push a little bit of blues up into this section just to make it a little cooler. Obviously we're getting a lot of cool over here, but I'm okay with that because this is the main focus. And I think overall, let's toggle this on and off. You can see like that's the kind of nasty green yellow and then a little bit cooler. The only thing I might do here is lift the exposure just a little bit so the whole room gets a little brighter. Maybe throw up those highlights a smidgen. There we go, yeah. So that kind of gives you an idea of what you can do with the footage in general, like editing wise. I like that you can kind of lift that pretty comfortably. Let's see what happens if we lift the shadows at all. Oh, there we go. So we can drop the shadows to create a little more contrast. That obviously brings the yellow back in a little bit, lift up the midtones. And overall, I would say that is significantly better than the first one. So if you're doing this for a professional client, I would say the footage kind of gives you that ability to do a little bit of modification in post that's not going to like totally wreck it but give you that higher quality look. So I'm going to finish this up and then uh, we'll jump into the next stage which is going to be the uploading portion. Um, actually I guess before I do that I'll show you when you're going to export we're going to hit export here. You can obviously export in any one of these. In this case I would export the file. I'm not going to do the Apple device. We're going to go to settings and then you can set this to whatever you want. I don't need the audio so I'm going to be doing video only for this one. All right and then I'm going to see, let's see, this is going to be a, well I'm not going to do a 91 gigabyte file. We'll wait until I actually get the thing cut down to what I need. My goal is to create a less than three minutes of a, of a walkthrough, maybe even shorter than that. We'll just kind of see how it plays out. So once I've done that, we'll get back in here. Hope this is helpful. If you're enjoying this tutorial and you want to see more stuff like it, please subscribe to the channel because I'm going to keep doing content like this. And obviously, if you jump into the X3 course, you're going to gain access to all of this plus any future content that I'm putting out in regards to this 360 camera and all of that kind of stuff. So thanks so much for your support. Let's keep going. So what I want to show you now is my final result. I went ahead and exported an original version of the video to YouTube, tested it out. I didn't like the way that it went and I'll show you what I mean. So if you look on here now, every single one of these clips is five seconds long. The way that I do that in Final Cut is I just double click right here in this time code area and I can make it 10 seconds if I want. So now it's gonna be 10 seconds long. If I move the mouse, you can see. If I hit enter, the whole thing changes to 10 seconds. As you can see down here, every single clip is now, oh, that's five seconds, one second. Let's double that again, make sure we got this. And 10 seconds, boom, there we go. So now every single clip is 10 seconds long, as you can see right here. Obviously, I don't need them to be that long, so we'll go back here. And here's what I figured out. When I put them on YouTube, in order to look at the footage, basically, everybody's gonna watch each section for a different amount of time, but it's really easy to pause the video, check out what you wanna check out, and then press play, and all you need is about five seconds for that entire interaction. So, here's an example. Over here on YouTube, you can see I've got the whole video pulled up in large screen. If I press play, the video is now playing. I'm gonna pause it really quickly, and I can turn and look everywhere that I want to look in this video. So that basically simplifies the process. If I know that every, every clip is five seconds long and I press play now, I know that within a few seconds it's gonna jump and I have about two to three seconds to hit the pause button and then I can continue to look around. 
And so this is a really easy way to use or engage with the experience. If I just click in the middle of the frame, it's gonna press play. I'm gonna see the time click down here. It goes to the next frame. I can pause it again and continue my experience. There's a small learning curve, but I think it's better than just having the video just randomly switch at an unknown interval, which is what I was trying to figure out before. So I tried giving longer sections to bedrooms, shorter sections to hallways, and overall I think that this is just a better experience. Now you can just look as long as you want when you're done looking at whatever you want. You just click again, and now the video continues. And once it jumps to the new scene, if you wanna look here, you just pause it, and now you can look around again. So I feel like that is the best way to experience this setup. Now what I wanna show you is how you do it with the phone. So you can see right here, if I move this phone this way and this way, it just gives me a different view of the entire thing, right? So I can easily pan with my fingers or I can simply tilt and everything moves as well. So if I press play, it's gonna go and you can see that I'm looking this way and then it's gonna jump to my next scene. And once it jumps, I just simply pause and now I can look around exactly how I was looking around before. And I can tilt up to see things. Everything just works pretty naturally which is, I think, the easiest way to experience this. I'm gonna let it play for a second more so we end up in the bathroom, and then I can pause again, and now I can look around this entire room very easily, okay? And so I think that this is the best way to experience it. Plus, if you know that they're five seconds long, it's pretty easy to skim through and get to the room that you want to see while it's paused, and then just look around this room. So. I really like this. I think that it's gonna be a good experience for anyone that's just trying to look at any sort of space. I've never really showed you the second half of this video, so we're gonna go ahead and dive into the master bedroom really quickly just for fun. But you can see we've got this kind of stuff going on here. You can easily pan around and look at all of the stuff, or you could tilt the screen. I think that it's really fun to use the screen tilt, but if you're stuck in a stationary position, then obviously you're just gonna use your fingers. Now, that is the five second clips, bing, bing, bing. It's only a minute and 45 seconds long, but it allows somebody to experience it at their own pace. So I think that's one of the best ways to do it. I do wanna go ahead and show you the screen version, so watch this. This right here now on the um, Mac over on that right side, you can see this is the video walkthrough. So the difference with this one is obviously, as you're going through, you would have to move how you want, okay? So that's gonna be, I think, a different experience that I don't know if everybody's gonna love, but I try and pause at different places, so obviously you can see me in the frame, which I don't love. I think the stationary is better because you don't get that. But at the same time, because this is constantly moving, maybe that experience is good. And if you want to, you can always pause the video and tilt around and have the same experience. So I think it would be dependent on your clientele. I do think the first version is the best option. I don't know if the motion is really necessary for the video, but maybe, maybe there's an aspect of it that's really nice to experience. And you'll notice that like where I have it, I'm basically out of frame in almost every direction. Like you can you can get a lot of good angles here and I'm basically not, like even backwards, that's my hat. So maybe you don't tilt down backwards very much, but overall, facing forwards, I'm basically out of frame even when you're looking straight down. And as you turn this way and that way, it's not impacting anything. So I think that is a really good user experience. Obviously, as we come to the hallway, you can adjust your frame right there and I think that on the phone, this is about as simple as it is here. YouTube just lets you know that there's a 360 experience going on, but you can see how the camera is just naturally flowing in the same way that I had it directed because I've got the lenses going in the direction that I want for this video. And you can kind of clearly see whatever you wanna see. If you wanna pause, you can simply pause and look around the room, see all the angles. Obviously, you're gonna get my hat in there but it's not too bad, it's not too difficult to kind of look around the room and see what's going on. The quality right now is not looking great, I'm not loving that, but I think that's because I just uploaded it and YouTube is still trying to process it. It says it's going to HD, but I don't think this, I've seen this quality do better. Maybe, maybe this is as good as I'm gonna get right now because the way that I exported everything. So if you export, you know, I worked in a 1080p thing and then I exported at 4K, but I think overall you would wanna export in higher settings to get a better experience here. Now I do wanna briefly show you the phone version of this, just so you can kind of experience the motion. But essentially here we are, 
I'll keep it tilted down so you can kind of see, but it's pretty easy to turn the phone as you're going through the motion. Obviously, you can still swipe through here just like we were doing before. And again, a very nice user experience. I think it's an easy way to create 360 videos that customers can engage with, see the place that they're looking at, what they want to get, maybe pause, look around. It's a nice feature. I still think I prefer the standalone one, as I've said, but maybe you're the kind of person that's like, no, nope, I really like the motion and that's what I would love to do. So that pretty much covers everything that I would show you for the 360 experience. If you have questions, things you want to understand, please comment down below. If you're someone that wants to get deeper into the nitty gritty of like the higher quality filming and editing, I'm more than happy to take this up a notch. But I think if you jump into the downloads, you get that footage, you play around with it yourself, you're going to see the kind of quality you can pull out of it. And maybe that'll be good enough for you and what you're looking for. And it'll give you the, you know, the ability to make a buying decision on the Insta360 X3. And that was really the point of this entire video, not just to show you how to make a real estate tour, but to show you what the camera can do if it's and to help you decide whether or not it's good enough for you because it might not be. But I think overall, you can create some really good videos out of this. And if you worked on upping the quality in a couple areas and made sure you did some color correcting after in post, then you could probably come out with some really good stuff here that would be more than good enough for people that are just watching videos on their phones to try and experience what's going on. Okay, looking at different rooms and things like that. So I really do hope this helps you. Please comment down below if there's any questions you have. Go download the footage, check it out for yourself. That will help you make the, the most informed buying decision that I think I could give you. All right, I hope you have a great day and I will see you in the next one.